One of the things you're going to be asked to do this week is to create your own method. Actually, a couple different methods that are inside of there. And there's not necessarily a lot of guidance on how to do that specifically. So I wanted to go ahead and throw out a little piece to just get you started. Um, so one of the things we do a lot of out here is we have this pop-up show uh, message di dialogue, show message dialogue. We use that in several places here. And given the simple nature of it, it's perfectly reasonable to leave the code like it is where we pop up things. Now, some things are easier in the long run, more maintainable, easier to change things up and replace things out if I don't use the obvious pre-built things that are already out there. Um, and so what I want to do in this case is I'm going to add an additional method that is going to be used to tell something to the user. And we'll look at a little bit at how we can use that down the road possibly to do a little bit more interesting things. So we're going to create a method. A method is basically a wrapper to do some work in. And we are going to create the method inside the class. Now, the important thing here is it's got to be inside the class. So the class, this is exactly what's downloaded from the homework. Um, and so we have the class here and the open curly bracket and the closed curly bracket down the bottom. You can see it has the end inside of here. And then there's the main method that was given to you. Again, the open curly bracket right here, the closed curly bracket that with the end. And this is a comment. It doesn't actually compile or anything. This is just for human readability. So we're going to put our new method inside of the last curly bracket, but outside of the main method. This is super important because it's a special placement where I can add additional methods that are still part of this class. So I'm going to make this me method what's called private. You could actually not do public or private and do what's called default, but we'll get to that later on. But private just means it can only be used by this class. The other thing I need to make it do to make my life a little bit simpler, and this is a special <laughs> case. We're only going to do this for the short term, but I'm going to make it static. Static says this is a special type of method that I don't need objects to go and use and call. It's going to make it easier for me to make this call. And, and it is useful sometimes, but I don't want you to get in the habit of using it. It's just something we're going to do for now. And then it needs a return type so that when you call a method, you might get something back. So for instance, if I go to the ATM, I um, deposit a check, I get a receipt back. I ask for money, I get money back. Um, I ask for a balance, maybe I don't get something back, maybe I do get something back to based off of whether I ask for a receipt. So the idea is some interactions I'm expecting something back, sometimes I'm not. So in this case, I'm not going to expect anything back, so I'm going to have the word void inside of here, which says don't return anything to us. And this is going to say um, show to user. All right, and so we have a method that just says show to user. Now we're going to start small. I'm going to code this small and you get this much in. Now it still doesn't compile. Now how do I know I have this red line here? Uh, error on token, parenthesis, uh, it's, it's expecting a, a curly bracket after that. Because when I define a method, I have to give it some behavior. So I need to open a curly bracket here and when I hit enter, Eclipse automatically adds the closed curly bracket and then all my code compiles happy happy. And I should go off and check it. I should hit the run button at this point and see Yes, indeed, I have the pop-up that's happening. I'm using two screens here, so it pops up on my other screen. So it goes through all of the sequence of everything that was there beforehand, and I'm popping in each one of these things, and I get the final message. And so all I'm doing there is testing, make sure I didn't break anything. If you broke something here, don't continue. Don't keep writing the code. Pause right now, fix what's going on here. Um, so for this demo, we're saying show to user. On, what I want to do is... Let's start simple, system.out.println, testing. I'm going to just do big, bold testing right here. All right, so if I run this code, it won't do anything. I, could, I should see that there's no red dots, that I typed it in properly. So the system's name of a class, out's a variable in that class, print line's the method we're calling to write out this text right here. And so for me to test it out, I'm going to go to the top of my main method here, and I'm just going to call this method. And the way I do that is I have to call it by its name, show to user. All right, show to you. Now I can hit control space here, and Eclipse will 
complete writing that code out to me. If I type something wrong, if I said t show SHA and hit control space, you can see it doesn't show up what I expected. So I can should go back, oh, say when I delete, and immediately the first thing that pops up is show to user. And I can click on that, I can hit enter, however I want to do that, it's going to pop it up and finish it. So now I can run my code again. Uh, save and launch there. I forgot to save it. It's going to save it. You see the first thing that happens right there is it says testing. So right away it says testing and I can go run the rest of it and, and it, it showed to the user. Now, did, did it really show to the user? Not really because I want to show the user not just the word testing every single time. I want to show some specific text that I want to choose out of that. So my goal is to replace these types of things with the with the method with the method show to user all right so in order to do that i need to pass in a message like start program or something like that now how do i do that well start program is what's known as a parameter i'm going to take this i'm going to pass it in and so inside of the parameter over here i need an argument i need to have something to hold this parameter for me and so the way i do that is i say string and I can name it whatever I want to. I'm going to name it message. So string is the type. I want text to come in. And Java, the type of text is string. And then I have this message right here that's coming in. And then I can use that message to replace this canned message testing with whatever message gets passed in. And so this is kind of like when you go and you order online to get some Christmas cards. You can give your own custom message, you set it up, and they print them, and they send them to you. That's exactly the same thing's happening here. This is our information that's being passed in it's that's being parameterized the, the fancy word there i'm setting this parameter and that gets stored in this argument right here so the arguments is what store the parameters coming in and then that parameter customizes the behavior of the message so when i hit run again you can see it says start program and my program is indeed running over here and it's doing the work now that's all fine and good we did some nice simple stuff the goal and what you'll be doing this week is replacing some of your pieces, not with the show to user me method. You have different methods that you're being asked to do, but you can go just like I'm gonna do here, show to user, and then you can replace the opening message right there with the pop-up, all right? And so now, anytime I see J option pane that show message dialog, this one right here, I can replace that with show to user. And then I can replace that with the output message here. I'm using control X to c cut that and control V to paste that right there. I need to put a semicolon at the end because Java requires that. And then I can delete those pop-ups. Now, I'm going to run this and test this. Again, what I've done here is I've replaced, as we just saw, the show message dialog with the call to show to user. And this fundamentally is changing the way my code executes. We'll come back to that here in just a second. But when I run it now, I get my pop-up. It says, welcome to Pizza RS order system. It's a great day to order pizza. And then I get this pop-up here and my name is Tony. And am I a returning customer? No, I'm not a returning customer. And there you go, your, your returning customer status is no. Thank you for visiting Pizza Rest. Your order is ready in 10 minutes or less. Now, we don't really want it to, to show up to this box down here. We do want it to do the pop-ups like we did in the first week. The reason I did that was to show you one of the advantages of creating this, me this method right here. I'm creating what's called an abstraction. I'm taking the idea of externalizing my data and I'm creating a standard way of doing that. And so if I wanted to print to the screen like this inside of the, the, the text box, I can do it. If I want to do, which is what was happening up above, J option pane dot show message dialog null here. This null basically is saying there's no other GUI things I want to pop in front of. The, the idea behind this is I can put some other window that will freeze while this message is being popped up. And then here, the message is the message that's being popped in right here. So in this case, I'm actually going to do both. That's one of the advantages of show to users. I can add in additional functionality. Instead of just doing the J option pane, I can also print it to a log file or 
you know something along those lines that will help track the behavior that's going on. So now I can save and launch this when I hit run, and it pops up here. You can see, welcome to the pizza order, order system. It's a great day to order pizza. Now, right now, we're stopped at this line of code. Until I hit OK, the program is paused. And when I hit OK, you can see it takes that same text and puts it down here below. If I wanted to print in the log file first, I can just switch the order of these two lines. Now it's popped up here, enter your name, Tony, and it popped up again. Are you a returning customer? I will be one this time, yes. And there is my pop-up once again, and showing the text after I hit OK, it shows down there. So the advantage here is I'm externalizing a behavior through an abstraction. And I realize that abstraction by creating a method. And in this case, the method takes a parameter, which is the message that wants to get displayed here. What your assignment you're going to be asked to do is to replace this show input dialog with some similar behavior of abstracting it out into a method of its own. The advantage there is it's going to allow us space in which we can expand out and add some functionality. It's going to let us do some validation. It's going to let us do some checking on that logic. And that's going to get us to the point of being able to do more and build our program up faster and easier by not having to um, create the wheel every time and remember this really complicated call up here. But instead, we can use a simple call like show to user, which gives us the ability to bug, gives us the ability to work back and forth. So the main thing you want to work on this week is finding some abstractions and replacing them inside of here and working on that logic. We'll make that logic more interesting and complex as we go forward, but don't worry about it too much for now. Um, it's something that we'll be starting with now and will grow as we get a little bit farther. This is introductory still. So keep working on it. Keep your head down and, and practice things, things out. If you have questions, zip up your whole project and send them to the instructor. Send them to me if I'm an instructor for this one. Um, and, and that's the best way to get feedback. I need, I need to see your code. We need to see your code. Um, it might be embarrassing that it's not perfect, but that's okay. Sometimes you need to put out your work that has a few warts on it to be able to see how it can be corrected, how you can change the code to work well, but more importantly, how you can understand the concepts that are being imparted here. This is not just a language here. There's an approach. There's a design. There's a, a, a understanding of the coding language. There's a lot of things going on here beyond just understanding these silly symbols and words that are running around. And so putting all those together is what makes this stuff really hard. Um, and until you kind of get all the pieces working together, it can be really slow and frustrating. But when some of these ideas start to click, then it'll come together much quicker. So keep working on it and ask for help as you need it.